Hey guys, uh, it's been over a month now that Mortimer has been here. And so, we had Maurice, Mordecai, and now we have Mortimer. And uh, he is a Peter's Eye uh, Mormorid. Just trying to see his little face. Looks like the guy who plays uh, music in the band in Star Wars Cantina scene. Uh, the snuffleupagus looking, looking fella. Um, but, very, very specially evolved fish. Uh, and you really only want to keep one of them at a time in your aquarium. Uh, or have a large group of them. Now... This fish has a really strange shaped body as well as face and its tail here is a battery essentially. It has coils of muscle spindles wrapped around inside there that are able to flex and release and basically a negative and positive flow are, are released from the coil as it moves over uh, this specialized organ uh, array and it's able then to electrify the water around it to put out a, a charge and with this charge it then is feeling all the things around it so it's able to check out you know it can tell that that snail is moving over there because it's sending out pulses every few seconds and uh there's some great videos out there right now about the, the communication of these fish and how intelligent they may be. Um, but they're a real mystery the way they behave in aquariums and the way they eat. Um, they definitely want either live worms or some sort of pre-prepared frozen food or fresh food, you know, um, for them to eat or they don't do well. They get very sick very easily. And um, they also need quite a bit of space and quite good water quality. Even though in the wild, they can live in pretty terrible water quality. Um, they're found all throughout the Nile River Valley and the Blue Nile, the White Nile, the Nile, um, <clears throat> and other rivers that feed off there. But it can live in very muddy uh, oxygen depleted water and yet in Aquaria it needs oxygenated and fairly clean generally they like a little lower TDS and slightly acidic um, is fine or slightly alkaline is fine but p fairly neutral water and they're very calm methodical they study things with their eyes kind of like a puffer does like a puffer fish species do um, but then they use that nose as a sensor and also as a little probe. And so that nose there, here he comes, uh, is their, kind of like their hands and their nose and their eyes. I mean, it's like everything combined. It's, it's this, uh, you can see they touch things, they taste things with it. And so there's these little, little uh, feelers on the skin, little organelles that make it extremely sensitive. Uh, and then from that, they decide what they're gonna eat, what they're gonna put in their mouths. But they also kind of make a little nest area when, when possible, when the materials are around. And they kind of make a little uh, defensive hut to hang out in if they can, if they can scoot. I mean, they'll scoot even, you know, medium-sized rocks. Uh, about their own weight rocks like these ones here and they will move them to kind of a barricade off like these rocks here have been kind of scooted by this branch and he's also excavated an area under here um, so that he's got a little fortress of solitude essentially could be a she too I don't know um, What's interesting, though, is the only way to tell the males and females apart, really, is by listening with uh, special equipment that can hear their electronic signals. And uh, 
these signals coming from the tail here uh, they put out can be up to 17 volts apparently and uh, they don't get enormous but they do get you know six inches is where he's at right now and they do get you know uh, a lot broader as well as a bit um, longer than this even so they can be eight or nine inches I suppose uh, but on average they kind of max out around six like this guy um, really interesting fish though the way they move the way they think and hunt it's all very uh, different than most fish now these are obviously African I said they're from the Nile uh, and they are the part of the Mormorid family, which includes ghost knives, which are another really interesting fish. Although, even though they're related, um, the ghost knife has this long body with one fin, you know, one fin locomotion, which is completely different than the locomotion we see in this fish. And, uh, they're a very ancient fish evolutionary, evolutionarily, um, they're in the fossil record quite a ways back, uh, at least 30 million years. And uh, they're just interesting in that there's a knife fish version with a nose just like this one. And then there's also some broader ones, whereas this one's very narrow and skinny. Um, can squeeze in between narrow cracks in the rocks and things. Um, other uh, species in this group in this family, uh, or genus, rather, are wide, and there's fish known as, uh, baby whales, uh, in the hobby, that are also related, and kind of fun, cute looking, I mean, they look like a little beluga whale or something, so, they can move quickly if they need to, but usually they take their time, and, uh, they also definitely don't like electronics I've noticed uh, be it the heater be it um, a pump if it's in the water like a power head or anything like that they're sensitive to it um, it can stress them out as can loud noises and things and they sort of pace when unhappy right now it's hunting you see it's using the the nose to try to find any sort of worms or planaria or grubs or anything that might potentially be food um, and there is a banjo catfish hidden right here, but I would be willing to bet that they know about one another completely, uh, that they can sense one another, and it's one of the bizarre things to think that a fish may have a sense of, uh, you know, something laid over their visual cortex and have another sense, which is the electric kind of echolocation that's even more detailed than anything we have. Um, kind of like a 3D CAD file or a 3D video game map that they can fly through uh, would probably be a good guess of you know what they're able to see in that they've got 3D sensory perception plus all the smells, tastes, uh, and water pressure and current speed and um, all those sort of things. They're really interesting fish. Um, and usually they're pretty timid as well. But they're definitely not a fish for somebody who's new in the hobby or who hasn't kept uh, a good number of fish before or a good number of uh, higher maintenance fish that need fresh food and um, need to kind of be... Honestly, they kind of need to be fed separate from everyone they're, they're that timid generally um today i don't know what has sparked uh this guy to be so outgoing but since he is i literally started filming and uh, didn't even clean the i mean i didn't have time to clean the tank i'm surprised he's still out usually he ducks and goes for cover and i haven't been able to film him for over a month so I wanted to get this shot of him while he's kind of doing this little parade and then I'll try to clean the tank and see if I can take this uh, video again but uh, I, I think brushing the, the window of the tank will uh, cause him some distress. So I just wanted to share this 
amazing fish with you guys. They can really slip into some narrow places too, despite their size. Um, and they are little omnivores. Uh, they like little insects and benthic creatures the most, worms and stuff. But um, they'll eat lots of different things. Uh, so that's the scoop with this bizarre and totally awesome, unique little fish. Or not so little fish for aquarium hobbies, I guess. Mid-sized sedan of a fish. But very interesting uh, regardless of anything else about this fish.